Now, about three out of four executives cite technology as critical for their sustainability efforts. The next question then arises, how can organizations measure and minimize carbon pollution from IT operations, which is also known as greenhouse gas emissions? Well, let's explore how to do so on Google Cloud. First, let's begin at the source, aka the energy that flows through data centers and powers the compute resources organizations use. Electricity was historically sourced by burning fossil fuels, but this has been changing over the last decade thanks to huge investments and accessibility in renewable and non-carbon producing energy like solar, wind, geothermal, etc. Since 2017, Google has matched 100% of its global energy use by purchasing renewable energy and has mitigated the annual carbon footprint of our customers' digital applications and infrastructure. We are also currently working on the ambitious goal of operating 100% of the time on carbon-free energy by 2030. This means we will match our energy demand for every hour of every day in every region where we operate with carbon-free energy supply. For now, it's important for each of us to reduce our cloud carbon emissions by making decisions on the time of day and the regions that power our resources. And so for starters, it's incredibly helpful to understand where your electricity comes from by using online tools like the ones our partner Electricity Map has made available for free. The next thing is to calculate your organization's specific IT carbon emissions. And for this, Google Cloud customers can leverage the out-of-the-box carbon footprint dashboard in the console, which is viewable by folks with billing admin rights. It includes accurate charts and tables on total emissions by project, by month, by product, by region, etc. This same functionality will also be available for workspace customers early next year. With Carbon Footprint, you can also optionally export the data to BigQuery to perform custom analytics and visualizations, and use this data for sustainability reporting requirements on Scope 3 greenhouse gases auditing. And as a friendly reminder, there are three emission categories at this time called Scope 1, 2, and 3 to help enterprises measure their carbon impact. And so scope one and two relate to emissions specifically controlled by an organization. Scope three are an organization's indirect emissions, such as their suppliers' activities or their consumers' product usage or effects from transportation and waste disposal, to just name a few. Now, once empowered with our carbon data, let's take action by diving into some strategies for reducing carbon emissions in your Google Cloud infrastructure. For starters, I'm happy to share that the easiest and most impactful emissions reduction can come from selecting regions powered by cleaner energy in your cloud projects. Google introduced a metric called the Carbon Free Energy Percent, or CFE, to empower users to select regions with higher CFE percentages because they produce fewer carbon emissions. In many of Google Cloud's products, when choosing a region, there's also a friendly low CO2 icon in the Cloud console. This icon is also annotated in the locations page of the documentation for different products. Now, if you are looking for proactive advice on what regions to use, there's also the fantastic region picker tool that helps you compare priorities around lowering emissions versus pricing versus latency. For example, you can learn that by moving a workload from London to Finland, you can increase the carbon-free energy percent by 23% and lower the price by 14%. I really recommend you check it out when you have a chance. And if your organization provides users with the choice to select cloud regions, you can furthermore set organizational policies to restrict locations to low carbon intensive regions using low carbon mode or you can allow or deny specific regions in the policy value box when configuring the resource location restriction. You do this by entering the in prefix and then a specific string for one or multiple low carbon locations. The next recommendation is to avoid resources from running 24 hours a day, 
especially for development and testing. And so, for example, by shifting resources to operate 10 hours a day during five workdays a week instead, you can reduce your footprint by 70%, which is an impactful and cost-saving move. And on the same topic around scheduling, programming workloads to run during the day when there's clean energy available like solar or wind is also very powerful. For example, checking the energy mix in the UK on electricity map at 7 p.m. shows it's 284 grams of carbon dioxide equivalent per kilowatt hour of electricity. However, Executing that same workload earlier in the day, such as 1 p.m., can be 200. And so by shifting workloads that may have operated at night to run earlier, like at 1 p.m., can reduce carbon emissions by up to 29%. And of course, in addition to intentionally shortening resource schedules, you can also proactively delete unused VMs, optimize VM shapes, as well as shut down inactive projects. This is where the Active Assist tool really shines, as it proactively suggests carbon-reducing configurations, along with other cost performance and security-friendly actions. This is thanks to machine learning. There's also several low-carbon architecture designs you can improve. Here's just a couple. For example, by using managed serverless products, you can leverage their separation in storage and compute resources, enabling to use the same storage space while auto-scaling VMs up or down based on traffic. This also prevents incurring compute or storage costs from idle resources. And by also refactoring monolithic applications into bite-sized microservices, you can gain many efficiency benefits. This is because microservices operate as self-contained modular functions that have less dependencies. They are easier to maintain and debug and offer more granular control over resource scaling and less tests. And so in summary, wherever you are on your sustainability journey, you have tools you can use in Google Cloud, such as Carbon Footprint, Region Picker, or Active Assist that are out of the box which I have linked in this video's description, along with other helpful strategies. And friends, if there's one main thing to remember, the best way to reduce your day-to-day -day carbon footprint is by picking the lowest carbon intensive regions. For more information and best practices, please check out cloud.google.com forward slash carbon footprint. Cheers.